Hi, my name's Nick Jeffries of New Projects and you're watching New Weekly, episode 26. 16,000 square foot new build property. Times that by, you know, even a hundred pound a square foot. That's 1.6 million. Six and a half thousand square foot house in Henley. Now the client wants a basement under the footprint. Can they afford that? Because that's going to be about a 2,000 square foot basement. People need to make their houses economical. So it's facade first. Building the house, working how we can insulate things better, working out where we stop air leakage. Busy week for new inquiries. I think we've had seven, eight new inquiries. So you tell me another company out there who can generate those that kind of business. Saturday morning, 9am, and I'm out with Stinky Binky the Cockapoo, and um, don't feel 100%. You know, last week was an awful week, you know, with the car breaking down and uh, stress at work. You know, you can't get things going your way all the time, and um, you know what they say, one thing doesn't go wrong. They always come in threes and fours, just to hit you when you're down. So we're now into April. Hopefully, some of these larger jobs are gonna be locked down and we can actually make some progress because my God, people are taking so long to decide what to do. I know the economy is on its head at the moment. People are thinking about moving, and then they're thinking about renovating, then they're thinking about extending. But the amount of time you put into meetings, estimates, weeks and months just go by in a flash. And the client doesn't pay for this. It's the time you put in this, the extra value you're, you're, you're adding to this. This is what makes you stand out from the rest. But this all affects cash flow, doesn't it? We've got seven, eight jobs on the go. And um, some are coming to the end in April. And we've got some few, few new ones starting. But we want 
the big 16,000 square foot house in Chigwell. We want that one. Uh, but the clients are struggling to get their heads round the build cost. Well, you work it out. 16,000 square foot new build property. I've times that by, you know, even a hundred pound a square foot. That's 1.6 million. She ain't never going to get it for a, a hundred pound a square foot. It's going to be like more like 150, 160, 170. And then we've got the big house in Henley. That's just going through planning now. We've got a meeting on site. Uh, Tuesday with the architects and the client just need to keep one foot in with the client and the team make sure we don't get pushed out because until the deal's done unfortunately you can't trust anyone you got to fight and get the contracts signed So it's Monday morning and um, to be fair, over the weekend, I've just been chilling out. Haven't been feeling myself. I've had a couple of COVID tests. I'm negative, but I think I just got a common cold. But where we're so nervous about COVID, everyone's thinking, oh, have you got COVID, have you got COVID? But no, feel a bit hot, but I have got a cold, not COVID. So um, yeah, over the weekend as well, I've downloaded the software called monday.com. Um, so it's an internal CRM cloud-based platform for project management and internal you know, file sharing within the company. Now, we don't have an internal CRM software platform at the moment. I've tried one before with a company called Simpro and it was a ball lake. It was very, very difficult. And then we went on to a free one called Trello. Now Trello's okay, pretty pictures, and you can upload and download and share and watch what people are up to but monday.com is a bit more technical and um, I'm gonna be learning that and obviously Guy he's the brain box within new and I want him to have a look because you can add formulas to the um, uh, line item so so for instance if we've got a project Cheson Road you can put statuses ID numbers clients details addresses phone numbers email addresses um, you can even link up to Dropbox files and um, then you can have drop downs into subcontractors, what subcontractors are on this uh, um, a, a project, what's the contract value, what's the start date, what's the variations, uh, have we got all their insurance C CSS cards, um, references, tons of information. But I've built the basic platform you know, like live projects, projects in the pipeline, new inquiries and so on. But I'm, a, I'm that sort of person. Once I start something, I want to do it now. I want to learn everything right now. So I spent all day yesterday literally watching YouTube videos on how to do Monday, how to do the calendars, how to do this. So to be fair, I've done, done quite well. I've invited Will and guy into it and obviously they're busy they're out doing stuff so I've had a conversation with Will this morning and 
you know, well, I want, I want everyone on board and everyone to get using this sooner rather than later because if, if people don't take to it, what's the point of put, doing the data? So it's only as good as the information we put into it. So that's monday.com and it is a Monday. So I've got parking tickets for last week, not too good. So that is, what's that, 80, 80, 80. What a waste of money. Uh, bills, HMRC, clients, letters, just all this crap Mondays, you know. Um, we do have our bookkeepers and accountants, which take care of our paperwork. They're based in Petersfield, and I've been in them for 12 years, so all that kind of stuff is taken care of, but I do like to be hands-on. So for that, we use Zero. So we've been a, uh, a client of Zero which is an online accountancy program for maybe 12 years. So I know my way around zero really well. You know, so that takes care of all of our projects, all of our invoices, work in project, work in progress. So it all goes into a system where it doesn't add up to the sales. And you know, it's such a clever platform. So I like technology, even though I'm an old fool at 52 years old, I like all this new tech. Because if it's there to make my life easier, and to make the client's life easy with tracking the progress of jobs, we want to know about it. But going back to Monday, if there's anyone out there who knows about Monday, get in contact with me because I want someone to maybe come in and give us a masterclass and maybe add to it. Um, so if we can do that, that'd be amazing. I've got Will coming in now. All right, Will? Good morning. All right. How are you All good. All good in the hood. So I'm just going to do, just do a bit of this just to make it fill a bit up and uh, I'll come and see you in a minute. So that is uh, Monday and Zero. Um, so little update on the projects. So started on site at Halliwell. Scaffolds up, tin roofs on. They're starting to take off the roof and all the rest of it now. So that's going okay. Been a few dramas. Um, on day one, would you believe it? So Guy has gone down there all day today just to sit on the project to make sure that's gonna be okay. Uh, North End Road, again, um, Will is gonna be on there today with the contractor setting out the, where the steels are gonna go, where, what we're actually gonna do, the welfare for the site, because North End Road is a busy high street. The scaffold is right on the pavement. So where the hell do you have a welfare room? So. The client is the owner of many properties. So there's a flat roof over the other side of the road. So I've had to buy a gazebo with weights to go in this flat roof so where we can have a table, chairs. We need electric, we need water, we need other stuff because otherwise we don't want a problem with health and safety because if they're gonna come on site, they're gonna to wanna to see a welfare room. They're not gonna see everything set up. So we need to make sure this gazebo tent thing is a working welfare room. So that's work in progress. Maple Cottage, Cotswolds going okay. We went there last week. We're gonna go there again next week to take a look. Contractors flying, projects flying, clients a little bit tricky getting the money off of because obviously prices have increased over the last two, three, four months and um, we can't be liable for the price increases. Stafford Mansions um, had an email from the client over the weekend. That is gonna be starting hopefully next week because we're waiting on the party wall agreements because where the steels go into the walls, we need agreements off them, off them, and, uh, the, the, and the management company as well. Holcroft, that's gonna be starting in May. Um, um, the big 16,000 square foot house in Chigwell with the basement. I don't think the client can afford to do the basement. So we're gonna, we've just priced up the works for the SIPs construction. Obviously Will is specialist in SIPs and the, um, and the fit out. That's going over to the client today. Looking like it's about 1.5 mil, 1.6 mil. Driver Road in planning, 3,000 square foot house in Putney. Mount View, close, beautiful house in North London. We went to see that last week. Estimates going over there um, today. Double extension, lift going through the whole middle of the property 
full refurb, budget about 500k. Um, Badge more, that's in planning. Six and a half thousand square foot house in Henley. Now the client wants a basement under the footprint. Can they afford that? Because that's gonna be about a 2,000 square foot basement. Shell and core, million quid. Don't know if they can, don't know if they can't. They haven't really told us the budget, the budget at the moment. Galsford Street, that's the lady in uh, Camden. Duplex apartment in a uh, Victorian terrace. She's on holiday, I've called her, went international. Um, we spent a lot of time on this. One minute they're super keen, next minute one of her buddies is an interior designer. He wants to do the project. Has he got his own boys? Probably. Are they using our numbers to get the price down? Probably. Is that out of order? Yes, it's bloody out of order. Um, Charles Hill uh, Farnham, that is a five new build houses project which we want to win. So we've priced up one, they're all very, very similar. So Will's on that today. So that is a little update um, on our projects, what's going forward. So let's have a catch up later on and uh, speak soon. So what's happening, Will? Um, right, uh, spoke to Fiverr on the way in. Yeah. Um, he, Beaufort. So we're kicking off from Beaufort mm. on the 11th. Um, just site set up mm. uh, and health and safety. Uh, and then, most importantly, when you set up a site, you have a walkthrough with all yeah. the drawings and the contractor, just to, ex just to it's, understand it. It's, it's so important to have that pre-start meeting. Yes. Just to discuss obviously to cover our part, you know, health and safety. Because as, as uh, you know, we mentioned the other day, if someone has an accident on one of our sites and we haven't given them the walkthrough. No. And had them sign off. And the, then, um, it's down, and then it's down to us actually, totally, totally down to us then. Yeah. Uh, health and safety is massive at the moment. Uh, and there's a lot of contractors who have been fined yeah. for not having the right health and safety on site. Uh, we use an independent company sometimes just for our health and safety because then, that also gives us the uh, the onus of actually being caring and understanding uh, and with the health and safety executive. Because uh, people who do their own health and safety sometimes come unstuck. Each job is independently different. So people usually have a generic one and then that doesn't, you could be doing a loft conversion, you could build a brand new house. Yeah. People use these all the time. Which is not right, but, that, but that's when you when you when you start a site, we register with uh, health and safety executive yeah, yeah, F10. Yeah, of course, yeah, that's what we do. It's really important that we register F10s. Uh, it's important that the health and executive know that we're working on site. It's important our subcontractors uh, know what our standards are. I mean, we have our own handbook which we, we developed exactly. uh, uh, and we send that out to our, our subcontractors about health and safety, uh, what we expect to know as a company. Uh, for our subcontractors to work but too. it's really hard to get the subcontractors <laughs> sometimes even to wear high vis and hard hats yes but we should lead by example and sometimes i am the worst for doing that but now you are ex-royal navy yeah. so you need to start stamping on these insuperior subcontractors and say look no hard hat, hard hat hard hats high vis 
I've got to go. Yes. No, it's important. It is uh, because not only is it important for health and safety, but we're, we're representing new. You know, no, they're representing our country. It's our uniform. Uh, it's our uniform, and they must wear it with pride. And they must one hundred percent. And they must buy into our brand and show people on site that we are new. Well, people come to us because they see us on social media or Instagram or whatever. And me saying we are West London's number one designer build contractor, we look amazing. Yeah. So. And it's, it's backed up. It, it's got to carry on yeah, onto yeah. the site and yeah. throughout the whole process. Exactly. And, be, and until until you walk off that site, health and safety has got to be important. And thinking about the general public, that's a massive thing. The North End Road uh, project that we've got on. I mean, we're up at what four floors up. It's North very End very Road dangerous. The most busiest road probably in London. Yeah. Uh, and and unfortunately, it's been closed recently. Uh, the, the 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 basic logistics of getting materials up there which is we're working on at the moment. We've got something in place where it'll be one crane will just lift it all up and put it on top of the roof. Um, we've got the, obviously the tin roof on, it's all covered and closed. Uh, we're marked out, it's all marked out now, ready to go. Uh, <coughs> and uh, on site today, they'll be ripping back some of the, the roof covering, um, uh, doing some enabling works, working at where the existing steels are, where we're coming off. Um, so yeah, that's, that's an interesting uh, project, one of the most I suppose logistical ones that I've had to deal with hard for a long, long time, but it's interesting. Right, so what, what else is going on today? So we're going to fire off uh, Chigwell, Mount View, and... Charles Hill. Charles Hill. Charles so Hill. tell everyone what Charles Hill is. Charles Hill is in the Surrey Hills. It's uh, an old nursery, um, and there's a development company developing five properties there, uh, but about 8,000 square foot each. Uh, and um, really, really an amazing, amazing, amazing site and amazing opportunity for us. Uh, we're going to be building out SIPs as well, which is structure and city panels. Um, and everybody thinks, oh, like a big house, 8,000 square foot house, why are you building out of SIPs? Two reasons, because obviously approved part L coming up with the, uh, the new laws in June. Uh, we're getting 283 for an external wall rather than 330, which will be the new, new laws. So we're making a saving there for our clients by more square footage for, for the money. Uh, and also timing. Most important thing on the SIPs is for developers is a shorter period on time. It goes up quicker, it's not weather dependent. So they'll be saving time on site and they'll be able to sell the houses quicker. And that's what it's all about in the development game. And it's uh five houses in Surrey. That's a game, 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 That's game changing deal. Changer. It's a big, big deal for us. Uh, we want to make sure we put to the bed. We want to bring the, the, the experience that we've had over the years, working in Wentworth and uh, St George's Hill, these beautiful, beautiful, amazing uh, buildings that we've built over the years and taking it and now making it economical enough for developers to build these stunning, beautiful houses at the correct price. What about, um, what else is going over? Um, uh, Chigwell is going today and um, Chigwell and Mount View. Yeah, so Chigwell, uh, that's been ongoing for a while. We're working with a client, uh, closely with a client now to work with their budget. It's important when you work on a, a job that size, 16,500 square foot, the massive great big basement, uh, the client expectation sometimes gets misled by an architect or someone who's given them some planning drawings to say that it's going to cost X amount. Until you actually physically sit down and go through the drawings with the client as a design and build contractor and tell them what the price is, then they'll know exactly what the price is. People just pull, pull figures out of the air these days. People just try to buy the job and then hit them with like variations and, and just muddy the waters. It's important that we find out what the client budget is, we sit down with them, we give them the right people, consultants, structural engineer, architects, interior designers, and then as a design build company, we package it all together and pass the package over to the client and be realistic about it. And if the client thinks it's too much, we say, well, what would you like to remove from that? Not that we can do it um, more economically or, or cheaper, we can value engineer it, but we want to make sure that the client's expectations and what they want to do is still met at a more economical price. And then we have Mount View, we went to see that last week, really nice project up in um, um, Hampstead. Um, yeah, it's the other side of, of London, but it's such a beautiful part of London to work in as well. And it's it's refreshing to be offered these projects mm. by, uh, by architects and house. by clients. And a lovely house, lovely couple we met there, um, uh, Middle Eastern couple, uh, know what they want. 
and Niall, the architect designer, she seems to know her stuff as well, so hopefully we can build a good rapport going forward with her. Perfect. Well, let's have a positive day yeah. and um, get some of these estimates over. Exactly. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>I'm the project director of NU and I've been in construction over the last 25 years. I've done everything from small extensions to multi-million pound house on the Wentworth estate and I love my job. Traditional construction is usually uh, block, brick, uh, render um, and timber frame. Um, SIPS construction is a modern construction which is now we're seeing, uh, obviously, the, the sort of the fallout from Russia, Ukraine, with oil prices, with fuel prices going up. People need to make their houses economical. So it's facade first, building the house, working how we can insulate things better, working out where we stop air leakage, working out where we can get more for our money as well. So SIPS is obviously a panel system, which is a, we use 180 mil panels, and that forms the shell and core, which is your external walls, part of external walls. Then we either have brick, render, cladding, um, any sort of facade that you want, stone, stone cladding systems, um, anything that you require on the outside. But SIPS is the future. This is what people need to understand. SIPS is the future of construction, the modern construction, where you will get value for your money. You will be able to insulate your home better. You'll be able to get more square footage and you'll get a quicker and more economical job. And that's what it's all about. You can build anything out of SIPS. I mean, we've looked at Knightsbridge, putting up, um, like a, a, a mansard on Knightsbridge, um, and it's be more economical. Comes flat back on the back of a lorry, craned into place, cuts time. We're looking at putting extensions, uh, extensions, just normal extensions, but it comes flat pack. So you don't want all this concrete drag through your house and you might, you might want to use ground screws instead of using, that's another benefit of using SIPs, it's lighter on the construction, it's lighter on the foundations, it's, it's, it's the way it's built, it's more easier to bring it through in a, in a flat pack method rather than bringing block by block by block through or you can crane it over. So if you've got access problems, maybe you can't get through your house and you're worried about having people coming through, bringing lots and lots of lots of like concrete and, and worried about doing the foundations at the back, have a look at the ground screws. We're working closely with the ground screws company up in the Midlands at the moment. We're trying to develop it so it's signed off by a building controller, but we're going to the next step. We're talking to China. We're talking about uh, stainless steel uh, ground screws. We're talking about developing the modern construction way that will simplify things. It will give you more square footage and it will insulate your home better.
So it's a Friday morning at 11 a.m. So I got here early today, eight o'clock. Me and Will Nickel have been at North End Road meeting the new subcontractors, Peter and his team. They have worked with us before on a project a couple of years ago in Fulham in Novella Street, where they did a double rear extension and a full refurb. They're really good, clean, disciplined, soldiers and uh, unfortunately these days some subcontractors are not good they're weak and they let us down um, so North End Road logistically it's really difficult to get the materials up so now we're thinking about um, craning pallets and materials up maybe on a Sunday morning and storing it on next door's flat roof where they're gonna to have to be some kind of structure built off the scaffold. Um, so we've got another meeting on Monday morning to discuss ways we can do that, set up the welfare on that, you know, the flat roof on the other side of the road. So it's tricky, everything is tricky about that job. It ain't straightforward at all. Um, going back to yesterday, we have been introduced to a new interior designer called Lois. She has been following us on Instagram for some time and she is a wicked connection. She got some amazing projects and she introduced us to two of those projects in uh, Clapham yesterday. And um, they're quite close to each other, literally 30 seconds walk. Both unmodernized. One of them is, I guess, about 1,600 square feet. It needs a kitchen extension, loft conversion, full refurb. I'm guessing around about 250K to do the project. Nice job, needs planning. The one round the corner, it's already been gutted completely. Everything's been stripped out. All there is when you walk in there is an empty shelf from top to bottom. This one's a little bit bigger. I would say it's currently 2,000 square feet. It got planning five years ago for a basement, kitchen extension and loft. Now, it's been sitting empty since then, but because they made a meaningful start on the planning application, that means it still has got planning. So all we need to do is get some construction drawings Maybe they've got them, maybe they haven't. I don't know, we haven't had the full information yet. If not, we get Will O'Brien on board just to draft some drawings. Maybe they can change it, make it look, look a bit more contemporary, modern on the extension. Because I know they don't like basic uh, build costs, bit, not build costs, um, basic um, side returns and loft conversions. They want something contemporary. Even though the lady isn't gonna sell, she's just going to keep it for the portfolio and it's going to be for rental use only so that's that and then last night lois sent us another deal and this one is outside london just outside the m25 heading north towards watford seven and a half thousand square foot house the client is exchanging and completing in April, May. They want a complete gut out refurbishment. I don't think there's any requirements for extensions because it's massive anyway. So for us, potentially we can just get on site. So that's three projects come in yesterday from one contact. And to be fair, this week has been a really busy week for new inquiries. I think we've had seven, eight new inquiries. So you tell me another company out there who can generate those, that kind of business. I don't know anyone. And, and it's all about feeding the beast, feeding the monster, feeding the machine full of new leads. And we do that through digital marketing, creating content, putting the positive message out there, making sure everyone knows who we are. Nick Jeffries and New Projects, number one in West London for design and build. How many times have I said that? But that attracts new business. So when people watch and listen and understand what we do, when the time is right, they say, mm, okay, let's give New a go. go. Um, and just be obsessed. You know, I'm, I'm obsessed about the brand 
making sure we are number one. Even though we're probably miles underneath the top boys in London, it doesn't mean that I don't believe it myself. You know, if I don't believe it, who the hell else would believe it? Um, anyway, so we got a busy afternoon just doing paperwork and we got some estimates to get out. We got to get Mount View out. We got to get Chigwell out. And I think there's another one we got to get out. So there's not much content to be produced today. Um, so I'm just going to be signing off now. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like and share, and we will catch you all next week. Thank you. Just...